Good day, and welcome to the UFC 168 conference call. Today's call is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Dave Schaller. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the UFC 168 media conference call, UFC 168, next Saturday night from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, 10 p.m. in the east, 7 p.m. in the west, and only on pay-per-view. Today on the call, we're joined by UFC champion Chris Weidman, former champion Anderson Silva, women's bantamweight champion Ronda Rousey, and women's title challenger Misha Tate. Before we get to the first question, I want to let you guys know some uh, important news. Uh, to accommodate the overwhelming demand for tickets, the UFC and MGM have announced today that they will be hosting a closed-circuit viewing party at the MGM. We'll have more information on tickets and pricing a little bit later today. But again, due to the overwhelming demand for tickets, we are going to be doing a closed-circuit viewing party. So if you weren't able to get in, on the live event, you'll still be able to experience all the atmosphere and energy at MGM next Saturday night. With that being said, let's go ahead and get this thing started for the first question. And that's going to be star one if you have your first question. We will go first to John Morgan from USA Today. Thank you, Dave. Uh, if I could start with Chris, please. Um, Chris, obviously the, the anticipation to this fight seems a lot bigger in the general public than it did last time around. Uh, I'm curious if you're feeling that as well, if, if you're any more excited, maybe this time around, or a greater sense of anticipation than there was uh, for the first fight. Um, you know, I, I definitely feel, you know, the, uh, the excitement for this fight, but uh, I can't did a pretty good job of uh, staying pretty close. I didn't really have too many distractions. I haven't really felt, felt it too much like uh, you might have expected, but... Uh, starting this week, it's going to start getting a little crazy with the media, and I'm sure I'm going to start feeling it more. But as far as me being excited, uh, of course, I'm excited. It's a huge, huge opportunity for me to send my fellow against him, and uh, I'm excited to go out there and do that. And can you talk about your, your approach to the fight based on what happened the first time around? I mean, even those that were predicting you to possibly win didn't think, of, I think that it was going to come by knockout the way it did. How the result of that first fight changed anything about the way you're you're approaching Anderson as an opponent? Um, you know, I was in there with him once. I, I, I kind of, you know, you get a feel for somebody once you're knocked out with them. Uh, so, but as far as my training, though, it's, it's, it's the same type of same type of training. I just train as far as I can uh, every day, with, and uh, you know, I still work on every aspect of mixed martial arts. You know, I'm not going really one more than the other, uh, and uh, so that's really it. All right, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. If I could quickly for Rhonda, uh, Rhonda, I know you know going into the season, the Ultimate Fighter, you made it very clear that you know you didn't really want to see it and kind of wanted to insulate yourself from it because you're afraid of how you were going to be portrayed. I'm curious if you ever uh, got a chance to watch it or expose yourself to it, and if it, if it came out as, as bad as you thought it'd be, or, or maybe you know maybe not as bad as you thought. Um, the only part I saw was when they kind of like tricked me into going to the premiere and then um when we were at the finale and i got to see the part of me beating misha on the coach's challenge and flipping her off all the way down with the sound off but that's all i saw and so from that did you i mean did you think that it came out or have you heard anything or any gotten any feedback that uh that would lead you to believe it was bad you know as, as bad or, or any better than you thought i haven't checked my twitter mentions since before i left the bulgaria Okay, fair enough. And, and a quick question about that as well, Ron. Obviously, uh, you know, you had all the, the movie stuff going on, and Dana said he had no concern that, that you were, uh, you know, handling things right and, and training and all that. Um, with that all in the background now, I mean, how was the experience? Did it detract at all from your preparation? Is there any regrets, or, or do you think that, uh, that it worked out for the best that you were able to fully prepare for this fight? Uh, I think that um, everything happened at the exact perfect time, and uh – I think it was good for me to really kind of get away and kind of change the environment I was in for a little bit. It's kind of hard to change your mindset um, when you're in the same environment. And so um, I kind of got to do a little bit of a reset, and I was um, I was still training really, really hard. And um, I flew out a, a couple of my um, teammates from Tufts to Bulgaria to help me train, and um, I continued my training there, but I got to do stuff that was different. And it was kind of like... Um, Really reinvigorated my drive, and especially when I when I got back, um, it was just like, all right, it's camp time, and it really kind of it, it broke up the the long period between um, between my last fight and now. You know, if you have such a long layoff and you're just in the same gym the whole time, um, it's it's kind of hard to really keep that same level of motivation going. But it was just like the second that I got back, you know, 
home, um, all these trips all over, it was just like, all right, it's go time. And um, I totally just cut myself off from all media, cut myself off from, like, any kind of travel that wasn't absolutely mandatory, which was the only thing I, I left for since I got back from these, from these movies was uh, all the fire family because they didn't have to do. And, um, and yeah, it was, it was actually really great for me that uh, with the uh, combing to Anderson and Chris, because then I kind of got to take a back to the press and I've really been able to isolate myself and just dive into camp every time. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I appreciate it. One, one last question real quick, Ryan. Do you remember the, the exact date or, or approximate date when you actually got to go to, to the full training camp in California? Um, I would say the 11th of November. We usually do a six-week camp. Okay, so that's about normal for There's no getting in shape period. We just dive right into it. Perfect. I appreciate it, Rhonda. And, and Dave, uh, did you say Dana was on the call or not? I apologize. Uh, he is not on the call. He had a uh, conflicting meeting today. Sorry. Okay. No, no worries. I'll jump off the line. Then. Thanks for your time. Thanks, John. And if you'd like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. And we'll take our next question from Heidi Fang with MMA Fight Corner. Hello. Uh, my first question is for Rhonda. First of all, how does it feel to realize that you've been listed as uh, one of the top pound per pound fighters in the UFC at number 10 there? Um, I was actually really surprised. And, uh, well, like uh, a friend of mine told me yesterday and I wasn't really expecting it. I, I thought that they wouldn't even count me on the pound pound list until after I beat Mitra. But, um, kind of cool that it got on there a little bit early. It'll be nice to see if uh, if it changes after this fight. I move up a little bit more. And being that this is your next title defense and it's somebody, you know, with Misha that you've already faced before, uh, do you feel that there's more pressure this time around for you or do you feel that you kind of already know her as an opponent? Every single fight is the most pressure of ever before. You know, it's, even if I'm... I'm fighting in a high school gym for a local judo tournament. It still feels like a lot of pressure to me. Every single fight is the end of the world. And um, it's just I've always been raised to be the kind of fighter that um, fights above myself in high-pressure situations. The more pressure it is, the better I'm going to perform. And um, that's a lot of the reason why I try to increase the stakes every single fight. You know, it's really hard to get just as motivated for the same goal twice. So... That's kind of why I was so down to go do these movies before um, this fight because I already won the UFC title. I already beat Nisha. How could I get even more excited and pumped about it the second time around? And I wanted to raise the stakes to make it more difficult for myself and be like, you know what? I want to make two movies and I want to beat this chick. I want to make it even more unprecedented than ever before. I want to need to raise the stakes so I take it even more seriously than any other fight I've ever had. Thank you. And for Chris Weidman, uh, have you felt that there's been any sort of need to really prove yourself being with Anderson that the last time that you guys fought, he was showboating a little bit and that set up your uh, knockout punch with him. Uh, do you feel that there's any pressing need to really finish him again to prove yourself? Hey, you know, just like any other fight, uh, you know, I want to go in there and get the finish. You know, I want to go out there and shine and, and show the world, you know, what I could do and, um, and prove, prove myself right on, on what I could do. Uh, and there's no better person to do that against Anderson Silva. And uh, I went in there last night trying to do it. I'm, I'm going in there. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be happy without uh, getting a finish this fight. I really am uh, going to be going for that. And just to follow up on that, in the last fight that you had, you had come off of a long layoff. You had a shoulder injury. And it was the first time a lot of people had seen you in the octagon since about a year. Do you think that this time around that we'll see an even better version of you? Yeah, I hundred uh, percent. I know it's going to be a better version of me. Uh, for the last for the last camp, I went to the Hurricane Sandy. I had two surgeries, year layoff, and even though I wouldn't let those excuses get into my mind before that fight, I, I, I had no excuses in my mind why I should lose. There are still just question marks lingering. Uh, you know, I'm not stupid. I know the reality. Uh, and having that much time off is never, you know, a good thing. Uh, but, I still, uh, you know, they didn't make any excuses in my mind to lose. Uh, for this fight, there's really no excuses for me to lose. Uh, it's perfect timing. I'm completely healthy. I haven't got out of shape since the last fight. Um, so 
was able to work on a lot of different things uh, for this camp and, and really change a lot of stuff about my style uh, and get a lot of experimenting in. And so I just feel like a lot better and more complete fighter uh, for this next fight. My last camp was really just trying to get in the best shape I possibly get in and far as much as I can because I wanted to get that rust off of being off for so long. Uh, this camp, it, it wasn't it wasn't like I was rushing to be in shape. I was very in shape and uh, improving on that and just improving as a fighter with the focus. Thank you. And one question for Anderson. Uh, Chris has done some interviews where he's basically said he's going to come forward and attack right out of the start. What do you think of him revealing his game plan? Hey, don't tell him that. Chris deu mais entrevista falando que vai partir para cima, que vai atacar desde o início. O que você acha disso? Oh, acho interessante. Acho que é importante ele ter essa cabeça mesmo. I think that's interesting. I think it's uh, important for him to go in with that mindset. Thank you. I'll take our next question from Damon Martin with FoxSports.com. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> my first question is for Anderson. Uh, Anderson, we've heard from Dana White, you know, saying that you're more motivated than ever before. Uh, it really happened about a week after the last fight that you really got, you know, geared up for this rematch. But I want to kind of hear from you. How, how motivated and how much, uh, you know, how, how much do you feel like you have to prove in this rematch with Chris? O Dana disse que você está mais motivado que nunca para essa luta. O que, que você está sentindo? Você tem alguma coisa para provar? Não, não tenho nada para provar para ninguém, mas eu estou bastante motivado. I don't think I have anything to prove to anyone, but I'm very motivated. And I know that, you know, you had done an interview uh, recently talking about the, the mistakes that you made in the last fight. Do you feel like they were very minor mistakes and, and it's easy to correct them, or do you feel like you do need to come in a, a much different fighter in the rematch? Você deu uma entrevista falando dos erros da última luta. Você acha que foram os pequenos que você pode corrigir ou foi um erro grande, uma coisa que você tem que avaliar? A última luta já é passada. Agora eu estou pensando na próxima e tudo vai ser diferente. Yeah, the last fights in the past, I'm really looking forward to this next fight and everything is going to be different. And a, a question for Rhonda. Rhonda, you mentioned earlier that this fight is different in terms of the pressure, you know, not being the main event. Kind of walk me back. You know, February, you had so much on your shoulders with the media and headlining that event and everything. Do you feel like this is kind of a fresh start and kind of a more fun experience this time around than maybe your first fight just because you aren't necessarily having the entire spotlight on you this time? Um, it's been a different experience, it's been unique, um, but I think uh, what's really been different about it is the real media push happened so far ahead of time. Um, you know, we shot the Ultimate Fighter pretty much all of June, and it's shooting when it did really made it possible to, to be kind of to leave the country during that time, so while I was playing on TV, I wasn't really missed, and then, um, what's it called, uh, with uh, Anderson and Weinman being the main event then, I really didn't have that much work to do when I got back. And so it was it was way more work doing the ultimate fighter, but it was so far ahead of time that it was kind of, it's kind of nice to be able to be kind of relatively left alone for the actual camp period. And, you know, the the rivalry with Misha, it is what it is. Obviously, it's uh, one of the most heated rivalries in, in the history of the sport and definitely in the women's division. But do you feel like there's a, a sense of finality going into this rematch? That, you know, if you beat her a second time, you know, can't imagine there's going to be a third time. Uh, you do get to kind of put this rivalry to bed. Does that mean anything to you to, to be able to kind of close this out and just kind of move past with a win? Because it goes beyond just defending your title. You also can kind of close out this rivalry if you beat her a second time. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I want to win every single fight, and it's, it's, they're all equally important to me, no matter who it's against. But, you know, it, it, it'll be nice that I have a deal with it anymore. You know, I just, I really don't want to be able to have to put myself in a situation where anyone can instigate me ever again. If you really notice, I've never had a problem with any other opponent that I've ever had. Just think about it. Everyone that thinks about me is being a big trash talker, but who have I had a problem with that I've fought except for Misha? And, um, you know, it's not like my my dislike for her outweighs how much I care for women's MMA. It's not like I want her to be, like, permanently injured or retire or anything like that. I would just feel like 
it, it'd be nice to not have to deal with her personally myself anymore, but the notoriety that she's gained from this rivalry has helped all the other girls out. So I'm, I'm happy that she's actually done better because of it. Awesome. Thanks very much. And we'll take our next question from Jorge Pareto with UOL. Uh, I, I will make my question in Portuguese for Anderson, please, uh, if you can translate to me. Uh, Anderson, uh, você fez uma, quando você voltou para o Brasil, você fez uma reunião, convocou toda a sua equipe, uh, falou assim, uma, uma mudança de postura. Eu queria saber de você o que mudou na sua preparação depois que você reagrupou seu time, se teve o, o, o que foi diferente para a preparação dessa luta, o que você mudou em relação à anterior? The question was regarding Anderson when he got back to Brazil, getting together with his team and reevaluating everything, and uh, what has changed uh, with the team and, and with the preparation for the fight. Ah, uh, nós temos algumas mudanças, claro que você, quando você quando você encontra um erro você tem que mudar. E foi o que a gente fez. Mas é como eu havia dito na em algumas perguntas anteriores, é, é passado. A gente está pensando agora nessa próxima luta e tudo vai ser diferente. Yeah, obviously we made a few changes. When you see a mistake, you gotta uh, get back and and see where that mistake is and change a few things around. But like I said, that that's in the past and everything's gonna be different from now on. Uma segunda pergunta. O, o, tanto o, o Chris agora para revanche contra o Chael na revanche que o Chael fez contra o Anderson tinham posturas. É, provocadoras, mas em situações diferentes. O Chael, digamos assim, era mais ofensivo e o, e o, e o Weidman, ele é mais... É, ele se tenta se inspirar, ele, ele é muito positivo. É, isso mexe com você? Qual que, o que você prefere? Você prefere um cara mais provocador ou um cara é, que é mais respeitoso, que nem o Chris? Como que é essa sua relação com seus grandes rivais? A pergunta é sobre the personalities uh, of Chill Sun and then uh, Chris Wyman where Chill is a guy that goes in and attacks and verbally attacks Anderson and Chris is a guy that is very uh, positive and, and almost inspiring what what does Anderson prefer? Uh, cara, eu não tenho nem que te responder sobre isso. Eu acho que cada um tem o seu jeito de ser, cada um promove da maneira que acha correto e eu tô aqui para lutar. There's really not much that can be said about that. Everyone uh, promotes the, the fight the way they, they want to promote it, and I'm just here to fight. É, e só para só finalizar, é, o, 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 de uma forma ou de outra, o, o, o Chris ele, ele faz algumas provocações mais, mais leves que o Chael. É, por que, que você, você prefere dessa vez é, manter essa, essa postura mais calma é, do que em relação ao Sony? And uh, Chris tries to provoke uh, Anderson in a way, but it's uh, a little bit different than Chill. Why does Anderson prefer the, the, the attitude that Chris has over Sonnen? Pô, a gente tem dois ouvidos, um nariz e uma boca, né? Então, assim, você pode falar o que você quiser, mas eu prefiro ouvir. Eu tenho dois ouvidos, né? You know, we have two ears, one nose, and one mouth, and you can talk all you want, but I'd rather listen because I got two ears and one mouth. Okay, thank you for the your, your call, the interphone. And we'll take our next question from Ken Pishna with MMAweekly.com. Hey, guys. Um, Chris, uh, go on. In the, going into this fight, this is your first defense of the title and such. Um, is it important to you to get a win here just to kind of solidify yourself as a champion? Because a lot of fighters say that, you know, they don't really feel like they're the champion until they until they get that first defense of the belt. And also, how important is it to you that, that it's Anderson that you're fighting again and that do you feel like you have uh, – some pressure on your shoulders to kind of prove the naysayers wrong. We said, oh, it was kind of a fluke the first time, you know, maybe, you know, I mean, you landed that punch and knocked him out, but, you know, there's obviously the detractors that say, oh, well, you know, anybody can get caught. Yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel, I feel the same as a lot of other champions. I feel like to solidify my championship, I need to, I need to defend my belt and, uh, especially going against the same guy, you know, and, and everybody saying it was a fluke and, Uh, it's not really extra pressure, it's just more motivation to go out there and prove those guys wrong. 
so it's, it's exciting. You know, I'm, uh, I'm excited to go out there and uh, prove them wrong. And it's not really any extra pressure. I don't want to put on myself. Do you feel like um, going into the fight with Anderson again? Do you have to? Do you, do you feel any kind of pressure to finish it a different way than the first time, just to show your your you know that you can beat him in any area, or do you think that it's just I, you just got to win, however, however the fight comes to you. Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to go out there and try to finish him, whether it's on the feet or the ground. I'll, I'll take either one. It's not like uh, if I think I can knock him out, I'm not going to knock him out because I don't want to submit him because I knocked him out last time. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's whatever I can get, you know, whatever I feel like, um, like I can get at the time, I'm going to try to get. And for Anderson, um, Anderson, you're you're a fighter that, uh, you know, we saw that George St. Pierre recently stepped away for at least for the time being and, and vacated his belt. You're probably one of the only other couple of fighters that could maybe relate to George St. Pierre and the situation that he was in and the kind of pressures that he faced being a champion for such a long time. Do you kind of, do you understand, you know, the pressures that George was going through and, you know, do you, you talked about the pressures um, around the time of the first fight with Chris, and do you think that was something, what George did is something that you may have done if you hadn't lost the belt? A gente viu o Pierre agora falar que vai dar um tempo entregar o cinturão e tudo, e você é um dos caras, um dos poucos caras que pode talvez entender a pressão que ele passa e por que ele fez isso. Você acha que você, tendo o ganho do, do Chris Wyman na última luta, era uma coisa que você pensava em fazer, como o São Pierre fez? Ah, cada um tem, tem o seu tempo, tem a sua hora, tem o seu momento, né? Eu acho que nós temos que respeitar o que o, que o Jorge Champier decidiu, até porque ele fez história dentro desse esporte, então ele tem que ser respeitado. Eu acho que cada um sabe o seu momento de parar, o seu momento de dar um tempo, e todos nós temos problemas pessoais. Eu acho que todos sabem o seu momento right timing e o seu momento que estão vivendo, We've got to respect George St. Pierre for everything he's done in the sport. And, and if he feels that this is the correct time, we've got to respect them. And, and everyone knows their, their time and their moment that they got to retire it or take a step away. So we've got to respect them. And you had mentioned, Anderson, you had mentioned that uh, you had felt a lot of pressure um, around the time of the first fight with Chris. You had felt a lot of pressure having been champion for so long and, and you felt kind of tired and, and such. Losing the belt, did that reinvigorate your desire and kind of reignite the fire to want to compete at such a high level and remain at such a high level, regardless of all the pressure that you face? Você falou depois da luta do Wyman que você estava com muita pressão, estava cansado e tudo mais. Perdeu o cinturão, deu uma revigorada, uma revigorada, uma vontade de voltar e, e lutar mais. Claro, claro que sim. Of course. All right, thank you. We'll take our next question from Neil Davidson with the Canadian Press. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Rhonda, and it kind of follows on the last one. Uh, you've been under a tremendous spotlight uh, recently as, as the first women's champion, and, and I know Dana White said that he'd given you a very heavy promotional load. Given all that you've gone through, uh, could you kind of relate to George uh, when he made his announcement talking about his life being uh, completely insane and, quote, a freaking zoo? I, I wondered if you could kind of relate to that. Well, yeah, we're not really doing nine to five and sitting down at a cubicle. And um, if you you fight for a living, you're fighting for your life every time you go in there. It's a stressful situation if you think about it. You know, the worst thing that could happen in your day isn't that someone will get your latte wrong or that you might get fired. You know, it's that you could really get physically, like, harmed. And not just that, but your your pride could get irrevocably, irrevocably harmed as well. And that's a lot of stress to really face time and time again. And it's so much that you really have to have a real love and desire for what you do. You can't really fight and put your life on the line for anyone other than yourself. And every single time a new fight comes along, you need to ask yourself whether you still want that. And, you know, you have to think that George had just passed the record for the most time ever spent in the octagon, like actual time. So, you know, he just 
broke a record. No one else has spent that much time in, in the octagon and him ever before. Can you really blame him for really feeling like he was done? Because no one else had reached that point yet. So I don't think it's really reasonable for to expect him to do more. If he wanted to do more, that's awesome. Break that record even more. But if he feels like he's done, then that's fine, man. Be done. Go rest. You deserved it. You don't have to risk your life for anyone. Okay, thank you. We'll take our next question from Stephen Morocco with USA Today. Um, question for Anderson. Um, Chael, Chael, your old buddy uh, Chael Sonnen was brought up earlier on the call, and I thought I'd ask real quick to see if um, uh, his announced uh, invitation to uh, coach talk with him, if that was true, and if it is, whether he uh, said yes or no. É verdade que o Tio te chamou para ajudar ele no TOF lá do Brasil? É verdade, é verdade. Eu, eu, eu infelizmente, eu não estou no Brasil e, e, e não vou poder é, é, aceitar esse pedido dele, é claro. É, mas pelo esporte seria super legal, seria super bacana, até porque os atletas que vão estar participando desse TOF são brasileiros. Seria uma grande honra poder participar do, do, do TUF, independente de qual seja o time, mas pelo esporte, pelos atletas que estão lá. Yeah, it, it is true. I did get invited, but unfortunately I'm not in Brazil, so I'm not going to be able to go down there and help. But I think for the sport it would be something that, that would be great, especially because uh, the guys competing are all Brazilian, so it would be good to go in either team and, and be able to help them. But unfortunately I'm not going to be able to, in Brazil, to be in Brazil and I'm not going to be able to help. Did he actually get it firsthand, and it, uh, or was it was it relayed through uh, Ed? Foi passou pelo Ed ou o Chael ligou de novo? Não, o Chael ligou pro Ed. Yeah, Chael called Ed. Okay, um, and then real quick for um, Chris, um, I w I'm wondering, uh, you know, bouncing a thought off you, if, if it might have been easier psychologically to take that first fight, given all the adversity that you faced prior uh, or beforehand. Um, you know, given all that adversity, um, do you think it might have been any easier to take a fight like that? You know, kind of nothing to lose, sort of everything to gain, as opposed to this fight where you have all this buildup, all this time uh, to sort of think about the bout and, uh, and, and obsess about it? Uh, no, I still feel like, uh, you know, I have everything to lose <laughs> in this fight. Uh, you know, like I said before, you know, I need to win this fight to solidify me as champion, and uh, I want to go on and, and um, and, you know, achieve a lot of my other long-term goals I have in this sport. Uh, and to do that, I need to win this next fight. So I, I put a lot of pressure on myself, and it's pressure that I put on myself when I decided to get in this sport. And, um, yeah, so it, it's the same It's the same mentality going to this fight as the last one. Uh, it's a better situation for me this time uh, with not having that long layoff and that adversity with the hurricane sandy and, and everything else. So it's, uh, it's just a better situation and, and no lack of motivation. Do you have any sense of how many people watched your training camp? Uh, no idea. To be honest, that was not, yeah, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you, was it a good idea? I didn't, have, I, didn't, I, I didn't have as much to do with that, you know, uh, as some other people did. Yeah, so I don't, I don't really know what's going on with that. Uh, we had to cut some of it down. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the big, big success, I don't think. That's for sure. All right, appreciate it. Yep. We'll take our next question from Guilherme Sign Calabri with Ostago de San Paulo. Hi, we're asking Portuguese to understand if you can translate for everyone, please. Uh, Anderson, uh, você diz que você acredita que o que o Eidman vai tentar a luta no chão? Você acredita que a trocação e a velocidade ainda são os seus principais pontos fortes para a luta? The question was, uh, uh, do you think that your speed and your striking is still uh, your strong point in the fight, and do you think uh, Weidman is going to try to take you down? Well, I believe that when you're well trained, you're well in your head, and you're happy with what you're doing, everything is capable. I believe that when you're well trained and you're in a good mindset and you're happy doing what you're doing, that anything's possible. É, mais uma para o Anderson. É, você disse que ainda não, você ainda não pensa em se aposentar, e, mas independente se você ganhar ou se você perder essa luta, 
É, você acha que o TUF do Ultimate Fighter poderia ser um novo desafio para você? Você que já está há tantos anos disputando o cinturão, defendendo o cinturão. O TUF, ser um treinador do TUF, poderia ser um novo desafio para sua carreira? Você considera isso? Uh, you you're not thinking of retiring yet, but win or lose, you think uh, coaching the Ultimate Fighter could be a new challenge? Tudo é possível. Meu foco é nessa luta, meu foco é, é, é o Chris Weidman e, e eu não estou pensando em nada além disso. Everything's possible, but my focus is in this fight right now. My focus is on Chris Wyman. I'm not thinking of anything else. Yeah, which one from for Chris Wyman? You believe Anderson will have the same behavior as the last fight with some jokes, or do you think that the the last defeat will change the post his posture? Posture. Um, I don't know. That's a question for him. I don't really. I don't. I'm not really worried about what he's doing. I'm expecting anything. You know. I, I, I could expect him going out there and pulling guard to uh, him, you know, doing handstands. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't really care what he's going to be doing. I'm just going to be looking to implement, implement uh, my game plan and uh, sticking to that. So whether he has his hands down, hands up, uh, that's a question for him. And uh, either way, um, it doesn't really matter to me. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And we'll take a follow-up question we'll from John follow-up Morgan, who is with Morgan. today. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask Mish, please, if I could. Uh, Mish, I think the ultimate fighter has been kind of the opposite for you uh, in terms of public support. It seems like there's been a lot of uh, kind of gaining and traction for you and people, uh, you know, kind of coming to your support, so to speak. And I'm curious, you know, if that's done anything to affect your confidence or your mental state uh, going into this, knowing that you have kind of that new groundswell of support. Not necessarily, you know. I, I find for myself, and I think I find my motivation best from myself. And I think my motivation going into this fight is just, you know, I want to win this fight more than I've ever won any other fight. And my my goal always was to be the UFC champion, you know. So that in itself is motivation enough for me. Um, it's nice to see that, that people kind of, you know, are, are siding with me. But, you know, there's so many bandwagon jumpers. There's so many people, like, I don't count on that, you know what I mean? I've been loved in this board and I've been hated in this board and it's not going to make me or break me either way. And, and when you look back and think back to the first fight, if you had to boil it down to, you know, one primary mistake, what would you say your biggest mistake was? And, you know, was it something technical, something mental, something... Well, I mean, what could you point to as to why you weren't victorious the first time around? Well, the mistake in itself in the fight was technical, but it happened because of emotion. So I think that I was over-emotional in the fight, and, you know, I went out there, I kind of abandoned the game plan a little bit, and um, I allowed her to play into her game plan. And, uh, you know, I just got sucked into all of it, and uh, I'm just, I'm more mature now. I've grown a lot as a person. And, um, you know, when you lose, when you make a mistake, that's why you make mistakes in life, so that you can learn from it and become better and bigger and stronger. And that's what I feel like I've done, you know. I don't necessarily look at it as like a mistake anymore. I look at it as a learning experience. Perfect. Thank you, Misha. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. We'll take our next question from Mike Schiapetta with Fox Sports. Uh, my first question is for Anderson, please. Anderson, um, if you win the title again, you'll be facing all of the same pressures as, as the last time you were fighting. And, you know, you mentioned in the past being tired. Um, how would it be different being the champion this time around than last time? Você vencendo o cinturão de novo vai ter aquela mesma pressão, aquilo tudo de novo. Como é que vai ser diferente ser o campeão dessa vez, diferente da ser campeão da última vez? Uh, não tem muita diferença, né? Só mais experiência. It's not that much different. It's just uh, more experience. Is he, does he find it easier to be the challenger than to be the champion? Você está achando mais fácil ser o desafio do que ser o campeão? Nada é fácil quando você é um lutador do UFC. Nothing's easy when you're a UFC fighter. <laughs> he doesn't seem he, he doesn't seem too interested in answering these questions. Is he just that focused on the fighter, or is he just tired of answering the same things? Está cansado de responder as perguntas. Está muito focado na luta. Eu estou bastante focado na luta e eu acho que as respostas às perguntas só é importante quando as perguntas são inteligentes. I'm very focused on the fight right now, but I, I feel that uh, the answers are only uh, relevant when the questions are intelligent. Okay. Okay, very good. And uh, 
question for Chris. Um, Chris, I saw um, Anderson is actually still the favorite in, as far as the betting odds go, and I'm wondering if you could just give your, uh, your, your, your thoughts. You going to let him poke you like that and just move on? No, I'm just kidding. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so wait, what was the question? If, if, um, go ahead. No, I was just wondering if you saw that Anderson is considered the favorite in the odds, the betting odds. I was just wondering what your thoughts were about being the champion. Um, I'm fighting Anderson Silva. You know, again, I wasn't the favorite last time. Uh, I didn't expect to be a favorite this time. Uh, he's been off, he's been in the sport. I can't tell you how much longer. I'm not really good with stats or anything like that. He's had, I don't know how many more fights than me. Uh, so he's just been around more. It's great to been around. He's had uh, some great wins. He's done a lot for the UFC and Mitch Marshall Arts. So that's fine. He, he deserves to be uh, the favorite. Um, you know, it's not going to uh, change anything that I'm doing and change my confidence at all. Okay, thanks, guys. Appreciate okay, it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And we'll take our last question from Damon Martin with FoxSports.com. Uh, yeah, a question back to Nietzsche. Uh, Nietzsche, going back to the whole situation with, with Ronda, you know, beyond anything else, this fight is a rematch. And as I mentioned to Ronda, you know, obviously it's a big fight for you because we know two losses to the same fighter generally means there isn't a third one. So how much of that has gone into your mind to really go out and prove yourself in this fight and obviously kind of settle, you know, kind of settle the scores around it beyond all the personal stuff, just in terms of the actual fight? You know, this fight is as big as it gets for me. You know, it doesn't get any bigger. It doesn't get any better. And I'm training so hard, and I feel so focused. You know, I have my training camp here in Vegas, and this by far has been the best training camp I've ever had in my life. I finally feel like I've reached a point in my life where my maturity level and my skill set are, like, on the same level finally. And um, I feel very focused. And it's been, even through all the media and everything else, that you know, the obligations that I've had, like, I feel so good about this fight. I feel so confident. And, um, you know, I'm just excited. I mean, I know there's a lot on the line, but, you know, for me that just adds to that element of excitement. You know, I didn't get into this sport because you know, I wanted to take the easy road, you know, it's, it's nerve wracking, it's exciting. And, and it's like all this whirlwind of emotions at the same time, but learning to balance it all is kind of a true art. And I feel like, you know, I've always felt that this sport pulls the most out of me. And, um, you know, I just can't wait for the fight. I'm, I'm honestly, truly excited. Rhonda has been so dominant in her fights. There's not a ton of footage to see. Now you had obviously your fight, which was a great fight up till the end. Uh, did you watch the fight with Liz Carmouche and kind of study that at all in terms of, you know, some of the advantages Liz was able to find on Ronda and, and find those weaknesses? Because, again, there's just, she's been so good in her fights. There's not a ton that you can see where, you know, you could really have a lot of footage to study and say, oh, well, she's done this wrong. There just hasn't been a lot out there. But did you watch that fight in particular and see anything that you, you, you liked or see any weaknesses in her game? Yeah, there's always weaknesses in the game, you know, and I think a lot of people build Ronda up to be this, you know, this invincible person and that there's no way that she can be beaten, but I don't see it that way at all. You know, I see a lot of holes in her game, and I see a lot of ways that she can be exploited, and just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it won't ever happen. You know what I mean? And and I'm going to do something different on the 28th than anybody else has done. Um, but, yeah, you know, those holes are there. I mean, you guys saw it. I saw it. Um, you know, I don't think it, it needs really any explanation. They're there, and they're there waiting to be taken advantage of. My last question would be, you know, in, in terms of fight, it's hard to make predictions. Uh, you know, kind of what you know, Chris said earlier, you take a win however it comes, whether it's KO submission. But is there a statement you want to make in this fight by finishing Ronda uh, beyond just getting a win, but being able to kind of get back from the first fight, but also kind of prove what you said that she's not invincible? Is there, is there a statement to be made in, in the way you fight this fight? Yeah, you know, I don't want to just win this fight. Like, I, I want to win this fight. and <laughs> I want to finish this fight. And, you know, I think that, um, you know, it's one thing we could probably agree on. I'm sure she feels the same way. So that's how I know it's going to be an amazing fight. And every day that I go into my training, um, you know, I know that. I know that we're both fighting for that, that same common interest. You know, we want to beat the hell out of each other. We want to finish the fight. We don't want a decision. I don't want a decision, so, you know, I'm motivated, and I'm ready for that, and I'm counting on it. I'm, I'm waiting for that. I'm anticipating it. I know exactly what I'm getting myself into. You know, I've been in there with her before, and, um, you know, for me, this is just a, a chance to show that I've grown. Awesome. Thanks, Nisha. Mm-hmm.
That concludes today's question and answer session. I'll turn the call back over to Dave Schuller. Thanks, Jamie, and thank you to all the media who joined the call today. Also, thank you to Chris Weidman, Anderson Silva, and uh, Translator Derek Lee, Rhonda Rousey, and Misha Tate. Before we wrap today's call, uh, due to the holiday season uh, and, and Christmas Day, our media schedule for next week is a little bit different than the uh, traditional uh, pay-per-view. So Thursday, December 26, we have the UFC 168 press conference that's in Studios A and B at the MGM Grand Garden. Uh, that starts at 1 o'clock. It will feature Dana, Chris, Anderson, Rhonda, Misha, Josh Barnett, and Travis Brown. Again, 1 o'clock, Thursday, December 26th at the MGM. And then uh, Friday, we have the weigh-ins. That's the normal schedule, 4 o'clock on the scale. And then something I want to point out for Saturday, December 28th, in addition to the, uh, the, the long-awaited fight card, we do have a special presentation uh, by UFC Executive Marshall Zelaznik. It's regarding our digital platform, and that is for media only in Studios A and B. That's 3 p.m. on Saturday, so we'll have a meal ready. Come on out and check out the special presentation about our digital platform that gets unveiled in January. Thanks again to everybody who joined the call. Happy holidays, everybody. We will see you in Las Vegas for UFC 168. Thank you for your participation. That concludes today's call. You may disconnect.